Hmm. It, it looks good, but it's missing something. I think I know what it is. Ah, uh, yeah, that's better. Hey folks, welcome back. I just saw it start there. I've got this little shelf up here with my old anvils on it, which I'm calling the Museum of Technology. Uh, I've actually had it up for a little while. I don't know if you can see it in the background of the previous episode or not. I haven't gone back to check. Um, but that's sort of the theme of this episode is there's various stuff I've done, uh, you know, around here and at the plantation, um, uh, in between episodes that wasn't enough by itself to really make a video. And there's things that haven't, you know, quite completed and some corrections to things that I've said in the past. So there's enough of it that's built up now to, I think, to make a full video out of it. And, uh, we can just get all that covered off. So this is a bit of an odds and ends, uh, video. So to start with, there's of course the uh, Museum of Technology up here. Um, right now I have my old anvils up here. The red steel anvil is still in use. <clears throat> Eventually I want to take that down because the other item I put in a while ago is the attic up here where I throw all this stuff that I currently, I don't imagine I'm going to have another use for. And as you can see, I have pretty much, I, well not pretty much, I do have two full sets of armor here. So I was thinking it would be neat to set up an actual building, uh, you know, with a museum in it and I can put the armor on armor stands in there and then I can have the anvil set up and, you know, maybe even put a, a little forge in there or something like that just to give it a, you know, give it the right feel. Um, so that's something I'd, I, I'm thinking about doing at some point in time, in which case this will come down from here and go to the museum. Uh, this is nothing to see here box. This is, I've shown this in a previous episode. Uh, this is where I keep my gems. Now, in what I've said in the past is that these gems really aren't useful. Um, you could use, I think, the chipped ones. Yeah, I think it was the chipped ones you could use to uh, for a spawn protection meter, and that was in classic TFC. And that just told you how much spawn protection you have. But in TNG, the monsters don't spawn around you anyway. They only spawn underground. And so they've gotten rid of that protection meter, which would mean there's nothing to do with the gems, except that's really not the case. Oh, hang on. I should keep that open. And not just enough items. J, okay. Because if we look here... Uh, let's do diamond as an example. Uh, we have a chip diamond. Is there any use for that? Whoops. I need to click away first. Chip diamond, no use. Flawed diamond, no use. Regular diamond, here we go. You can see that TNG has added some uses. I mean, you can build a block of diamond out of it. That's fine. Um, but you can make a jukebox. And I don't think it's just a diamond, so let's go with something else. Let's try something cheaper, like barrel. There we go. Okay, so... Yeah. Oh, no, actually, so the jukebox does actually need diamond. All right, but with the diamond, we could make a daylight sensor, and also with the barrel, so we can make a daylight sensor, just a regular barrel. So I think that's true of all the gems. I haven't gone through and checked to see if the, if any of them have special stuff like the diamond had the jukebox, right? Um, but just to go through the barrel here, since it's a, it's a less valuable gem, and therefore it doesn't have, probably won't have as much special stuff. If we look at the uses for a flawless one, well, we can make two daylight sensors out of it. And if we look at an exquisite one, we can make three daylight sensors of an exquisite, but we can also make two redstone lamps. So that's another way to get permanent lamps. Now, we first need to find some redstone, which I haven't found yet. It does exist in the game, or it's supposed to. I mean, I look in the ore, the ore configuration charts, and it looks like it's in there. Uh, uh, the ores for it are cinnabar... And I can't remember what the other one is. Selenite or something like that. I don't remember, but Sinbar is the main one. But there are two ores for it uh, that you can get the redstone from. And I haven't found any yet. 
But if we were to find that, then we could, this would be another way of making it, well, this would be a way of making a permanent lamp, you know, not even the olive oil ones. Um, however, as you can see, I only have one exquisite gem at the moment, this exquisite emerald. And this does mean, though, that when I'm mining, I'm going to focus more carefully on, or, or keep better track of it. Because right now, it's, you know, if I happen to see the gem pop up while I'm mining away, then, and I have room in my inventory, then I'll grab it. So now, particularly with these exquisites, if I see them pop up, I'm really going to want to keep an eye out for them and, and grab them. So, just showing that, uh, I guess we should go back diamond just for a moment. See if there was, whoops, learn to spell. Yeah, so except for the fact that with just a regular diamond, you can also make a jukebox. It's no different from the, well, you can make a block of diamond. It's no different from the barrel. You can make daylight sensors out of it. And uh, if you have an exquisite one, you make a couple of redstone lamps. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, oh, the next thing is, um, so one of the slightly annoying things about these oil lamps here, these olive oil lamps, is you can't just, you know, like a torch, you can just throw it against the side of a block, which is kind of convenient. You can't do that with these. They have to be sitting on something. So I've come up with two ideas. One is the fence post here. And, you know, you put a fence post up against the wall, and then the lamp can sit on top of it. And the other one is a shelf, or, sorry, shelf, a, a slab, same as what I've got up here for the uh, <laughs> the Anvil Museum. And so I've got one up there. Um, I, I like the fence post better, but I thought I'd throw it out there just in case you guys have an opinion as to which you think looks better. Or if you can come up with something else, some other way of mounting them up there. Okay, for the next few things, it's outside and it's night, so uh, I'll be back after I've slept. Now, in the previous episode, I had uh, filled up these uh, two lamps. Well, not, not filled them, but I'd put some olive oil in them. This one had 25 millibuckets in it, and I think the other one had twice as much, so 50 millibuckets in it. And I had calculated that even with a small amount that was in this one, it should last for over a year. It actually went out after just eight days, so nowhere near a year. And so there were a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first is when I was doing my calculation, for some reason, I used 10 hour days. I think I was getting confused with there being 10 days in a month in, in TFC, um, but obviously there's 24 hours a day, even in TFC. So that was one error. But an even bigger one is that the wiki says that a full lantern, which is 250 millibarrels, uh, will last 8,000 hours. And that's not true. When I went and looked through the configuration files and I even took a look in the code to double check it, uh, it's only 2,000 hours. So when you combine those factors in, it's not going to last a, a year. So it turns out that it's only 2,000 hours. I've gone and corrected the wiki now. So if you go look, you'll get the right number out of it. And uh, for a full lantern, that means that it'll uh, last about 83 days, which is roughly 10 months. And just in case you're interested, the that 2,000 hours for a full lantern, that works out to 8 hours per millibarrel. The other thing that was a little bit odd is, uh, so this one here that had twice as much in it, it should have lasted another eight days, but you know, on the same day after that one ran out, um, I came over here just a little bit later. I don't even know that it was a whole hour later. Maybe it was uh, in game hour, of course. Um, and I took it off of the, it was lit and I took it off the, this, uh, fence post here. And as soon as I took it off, it went out, which is fine. And then I, when I put it back on and tried to light it, it wouldn't light, right? You see it won't light. So it was almost as if taking it off threw away whatever oil was left in it. So I'm not sure what happened here. Uh, I need to do more experimentation to find out if there's a bug that causes, you know, the olive oil to disappear from a lamp if you take it off a post while it's lit or something like that. I, I don't know. 
but uh, I'm not going to do that experiment until I have a lot more olive oil. So that's going to be at least another year in game year from now. Because uh, you know, even with the paste I have here, that's not going. That's only going to be enough olive oil for maybe four lamps. So I don't want to play with it and and possibly waste it. Uh, another thing to point out is that uh, all this stuff I'm doing with lighting, trying to get some better lighting than these torches. There are configuration files for TFC and TNG, um, which you can use if, if you're not concerned about, you know, playing it kind of like in the vanilla way, the default way that it is, you can affect this stuff with configuration files. Like there's one configuration file called um, terraformacraftgeneral.cfg, and it has a parameter in it called torch time, which which you can set to say how long torches will burn for before they go out. If you set that to minus one, then they never go out. So, you know, you know, if you're not too much of a purist about this and you don't want to have to fiddle around with, uh, you know, making the lanterns and making the olive oil or, you know, trying to collect enough exquisite gems so that you can build yourself a redstone lamp or something like that. Um, you could just go in and, and set that torch time parameter to minus one and then just use torches in the normal way and they won't go out on you. And that's generally true of a lot of this stuff. Like, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's parameters in those files for a lot of things that can be a little bit annoying. You know, like I believe there's a parameter in there for how long it takes for, uh, the blast furnace to process ore and stuff like that. So you could go in there and, and fill these things, but I'm trying to give, you know, especially since I'm, I'm this is kind of a demonstration and uh, not really quite a tutorial, although I guess you could kind of use this as a tutorial on uh, TNG. But I'm just trying to demonstrate what it is when it's uh, straight up. Okay, the next thing to look at over here is the tree farm. Before we do that, I should really empty out my inventory. So... Uh, boom, boom. Uh, that should be good enough, I hope. We're going to need this. <clears throat> okay, the keen eyed among you may notice that these are oak trees and not the usual Douglas fir that I've been using. Um, a problem that I was running into with the Douglas fir was that when I used a scythe to, uh, to collect saplings, I was never getting as many saplings as the number of trees that I was collecting from. And that was even, you know, jumping up to try and reaching leaves higher up. So I, so over time I was like, the, my forest was getting smaller and smaller and the only way I could keep its size up would be to run into the, you know, into the wilderness here and harvest more, uh, more saplings off trees there. So that's, that's unsustainable, of course. And, you know, we live in a world where we want to strive for sustainability now. Um, so I decided I'd try the oak trees instead to see if they give me more saplings. And uh, so let's run through this now. I'll uh, time lapse it for you. Okay, so I've gone and run through, and I didn't do any jumping up and down. Actually, these I can probably reach without jumping. Let's see. No, they require jumping. Oh, this one I can reach. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I didn't do so. Just uh, harvesting what I could reach without having to jump up and down or climb ladders, do anything like that. And I did really well, actually. Okay, good. Uh, Forty-three saplings I collected and I only have 30 trees here so that's great um, I don't have to screw around so now the question is will they fall down all at once the way that the uh, uh, the way the Douglas fir do let's find out no okay Maybe it has something to do with the order in which I planted them. I don't think so. I think it's the way that their leaves connect up up top. But we'll see. Let's try this corner. Okay, that took one other one with it. Uh, 
Okay, so they do show a similar behavior, but it's not as good as with the Douglas fir. Oh, and I just picked up the saplings. So there were some saplings trapped up in the leaves, or up in the branches. I guess that's not a surprise. Um, okay, so that's not quite as good, although... I mean, it is, you know, as I've shown before, it is kind of neat, you know, you chop down one tree and the whole forest falls down. Um, but there is a downside to that. I'm going to need some water here. Uh, which is that I don't have enough inventory uh, to hold it all. I can, let's see, actually, I may just have enough inventory. Let's see how far we get with this stuff. That only took down that one, no others. Ah, it took down a lot. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm pretty much full up now. If I were to take down the rest of these trees, I wouldn't be able to fit them all into my inventory. Um, and so I end up with this kind of this race against time to try and empty them out of my inventory. Uh, you know, before the logs that are floating around despawn. So there's, a, I guess there's a silver lining here to the behavior that we have that at least I don't have that problem, you know, is I can just knock down as many as I can hold and they still come down in groups. So it isn't, I don't have to hammer all 30. It's like, it seems I'm averaging maybe about four per or something like that. And, uh, so that's not so bad, I guess. So I may tie some different other different types of trees to see if the, they give me good, better results. Um, or, you know, I could also try changing the spacing between these, these, oaks uh, move them a little closer together and see if that allows them to fall together better although like i said i don't know ah maybe i'll just leave it as it is it seems like a pretty good result that i'm getting now okay um the last thing here before we head down to the plantation is here i so I don't remember if it was last episode or the episode before, but I raised up the fences and put this kind of berm underneath to try and stop the the young'uns whoops, from escaping because they were sliding through the fence posts. And that does seem to have worked. I mean, it's been a couple of months, I think, since I put this up. And there have been some babies, although they're mostly grown up now. But there was like baby cow there's still some baby cows and stuff like that. And nobody's escaped. So there's another round of, uh, of uh, baby sheep on the way. And uh, we'll see if uh, anything happens with them. But so far it's looking like that's working out pretty well. Okay. So with all that uh, out of the way, it's time to head south to the plantation. I will meet you there. Okay, so when all was said and done, I ended up having to chop down about 10 of those 30 oak trees, uh, which means each one takes down two, uh, roughly two others on average. So just in the, in the interest of science, uh, well, I've replanted them spaced closer together. So instead of being, you know, two apart, they're just one apart from each other. Uh, so it's the same number of tr oak trees in roughly the same pattern, just like I said. Uh, that offset always bothers me. Um, but like I said, they're, they're closer together. So we'll see. That will almost certainly cut down on the number of saplings I collect. So it will be interesting to see whether, not only whether that helps them to all come down better together, but also whether I can still get enough saplings for replacement levels. But, okay, now, now I head south. See you in a bit. Uh, seeing these uh, hyenas here, has reminded me of another little thing. Uh, a little while back, I did a test to see whether they're aggressive during the day and they're not. 
so I did test also later on to see whether they're aggressive at night, and they are. I mean, that's sort of what I expected would be the case, but I have confirmed it. I just thought I'd mention that. These guys, since, since I happen to see these guys along the way, it reminded me of that. Okay, see you down at the plantation. Ah, uh, there's a, there's something else. Eh? Another little change I made is I added this big pillar of uh, stone with a straw block on the top just to uh, add a bit of contrast. Uh, just because here at the plantation, this is where I'm at. Um, just because when I'm up top here, since the whole plantation is down in this little bowl down here, is I sometimes get a little turned around, not sure the way back, so I added that up there just to make it a little easier when I'm in the local area to see it. Um, having a look here, it's a little disappointing that not all of the uh, jute is ripe yet. So I'll harvest what I can of it and see if that's enough to make the remaining nets that we need. Um, I'm going to need 40 nets in total. I have 22, so I need 18 more. And it takes 5 jute to make a net. Which means I'm going to need 90. Oof. Yeah, this is this thing. I, I mentioned it back when, uh, I just mentioned it in passing when I was looking at the tree farm. But TNG has added these offsets. Where can we can see it more easily over here? To crops. Well, to plants in general. Um, so they don't just end up planted right in the middle of the square. So you can see that. Uh, let's put some light on here. You can see that this plant here is supposed to be in the square right. The, right in front of this one that I'm pointing at, that square there, and he's in it, but he's pushed, you know, off into this corner sort of, and this one is further over into this corner. And um, well, might as well leave that there. And I'm pretty sure they did that just to give it kind of a more realistic look, you know, that they're not in these like regimented rows, but they move around a little bit, and that's fine. But when you look at the When you look at the uh, jute, it sprawls so much, like this jute plant here is more than halfway into this other square here, um, that it just becomes a mess. And so now as I'm finding here, is since, I, since they're not all ripe, I can't just run through and harvest everything. I have to try and find the ripe ones, and that can be kind of tough. You know, okay, that looks like that was it, you know, sort of thing. So, um... So I don't know. I think when I plant this, I'm going to space them out, replant them. I'm going to space them out more. But right now, I'm going to harvest these, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll see how many jute we end up with, and whether that's going to be enough. Well, I've harvested what I can, and I'm just barely short of what I need. So I've got what here? I've got well, a little more than just. I guess I got 78, and I really do. I really do need. 90 because I really do need at least I need 40 net jute net for things to work out the way I want them to so I'm going to wait around a bit for more of this to uh, to ripen and while I'm here I'll harvest all this other stuff here it is kind of interesting though that oh, the whole reason for setting up this southern plantation was for the uh, for the sugar cane here and you know I'll go ahead and harvest it but it's Actually, the least, well, it isn't the least important, but it's not nearly as important to me right now as that jute is. So, oh, you know, things change. But eventually I'll be able to put the sugar here to use for making various things. The sugar that I get from this. Okay, I'll uh, I'll meet you back when, uh, when uh, enough of the remaining jute has ripened that I can uh, harvest it. Okay, well, it took about three more days, but I finally was able to harvest most of the rest of the uh, the jute. I'll show you what I did over there in a moment. And I built myself a, some hickory barrels for water so I could process this stuff. And now I have more than enough 
to build the uh, to build the remaining 18 nets I need. So let's first let's see 32. I need 18. So let's start with 16. I mean, eventually I should probably just go ahead and build f uh, 80 nets, but right now 40 is all I need to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate. Okay. And I should take some of these barrels with me as well. Oh, one thing I noticed. Yeah, I can demonstrate this right here. So uh, a couple episodes, I think it was just last episode, I was talking about encumbrance with barrels and I was saying it didn't matter how much you had in the barrel. Um, you know, even if you had just the one millibarrel worth of one millibucket worth of stuff inside the barrel, then it would count towards encumbrance. And so if you had two barrels that had something, had anything in them, then you'd be, end up moving slow. And I just noticed when I was fiddling around with these barrels, is it actually isn't uh, a matter of what's in them. It's just whether they're sealed or not. So if I seal these two barrels up, there we go. See, I'm overburdened. So it's just if they're sealed or not. That's how they, that's how they uh, monitor it. So even if there's nothing in them, two sealed barrels will uh, slow you down. At most you have is one. Okay, we're gonna go over the hot spring. Uh, but first, I will show you what I did here. Uh, not that it really matters. So I got so annoyed at trying to selectively harvest this stuff that I uh, ripped up the stuff that hadn't that hadn't matured yet, and uh, and I replanted it in a checkerboard pattern so that it's going to be really easy. Now the fact that I planted all this at once means it'll all mature at once, so I won't really have to do a selective harvest. But still, I was pissed off, so I did it anyway. Let's head over to the hot spring. Hey, here we are at the hot spring. Let's get our barrels laid out. I've already gone over the, most of the process in the previous episode of uh, making the olive oil, so I won't dwell too much on it. Uh, I just want to want to clarify a couple of items. So one of the things was is that uh, I was using one barrel. You, you need to clean the nets after I use the olive after you filter the olive oil through them. Um, and so I was grabbing, a, having to go over here, over here somewhere, uh, to some fresh water to fill out the barrels, to be able to clean the nets. However, since I have these, uh, red metal, uh, red steel buckets that can contain source water blocks, what I could have done, I, I could have just done this, right? Take out four, put a bucket in one corner, a source block in one corner, source block, and now I've got this like uh, permanent pool of water right beside the hot spring, nice and handy. I don't have to go running back and forth. So that was that was one thing I could have done to make life a little easier on myself. Okay, uh, so now back to what we're doing here, and all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to process 40 all paste. That will take five buckets of spring water. And that's going to give me olive oil water in two hours. So uh, you won't have to wait through it, but what I'm going to do is just clean up. I'm going to do some little civil engineering. I'm going to tidy things up so I'm not having to jump up and down all the time to get to and from this place. Prove the access, as it were. So I'll see you in two hours. Okay, so uh, two hours have passed, probably a little bit more than that. And now I have my olive oil water. We can unseal the barrel, take exactly 40 jute nets, put them in here, and boom. And we know we got the count right because... <laughs> We didn't lose any. Uh, I pointed that out in a previous episode. If you have too many nets, you'll just lose the excess. Okay, now, this is the important part here. We have a thousand 
millibuckets of olive oil in here. Exactly a thousand. That's why I wanted to process exactly 40 of the olive paste because that would give us exactly a thousand millibuckets of olive oil. Which means I can scoop that up. Oh, sorry. Need a regular bucket. Uh, I'm running out of space in my inventory here, so let's get rid of some of this dirt. I don't need it for anything. I know there are some people who possessively possessively obsessively who obsessively keep all of their dirt and I sort of do when I'm at home but uh, I can I, I can hold back here all right so now we've got all the oil in the bucket that frees up this barrel so now we have a uh, seven paste um so that should just be One bucket of hot spring water should be enough to process the remaining seven paste. Yep, that'll so in another two hours. See you back in another two hours. All right, and now the uh, last of our all the paste has been processed down into olive oil water. Uh, we had seven there, so we need. To... Oh, I forgot to clean these nets. Oh, okay. Um. That should be enough. Probably more than enough. Right, so I need to put the jute nets in here to clean them. Uh, that'll take an hour. Bring you back in an hour. Okay, our nets are clean. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I take seven of them. Now, seven dirty nets. I'll clean those when I get home because I'm done here. So I have 175 mil buckets of olive oil. Now I can take this bucket here, put it back in the barrel. And now all of my olive oil is in a single barrel, which I can seal up and take home without being encumbered. And that was what I wanted to demonstrate last episode, but I didn't have enough uh, didn't have enough jute nets to be able to do it. So the, the important thing is is that you, you want to be able to process the your olive paste in multiples of 40 because every 40 gives you a thousand millibuckets of olive oil which you can then scoop out using using buckets. So all right um, I think that's it so we can head back home now. And home we are. And since this is a barrel, we might as well put it in what's quickly becoming our barrel house. Our hickory barrel full of olive oil. Well, not full of, but that contains olive oil. I've gone and collected up the uh, lamps that I've made. And so let's fill them up. All right. So let's... Uh, we want one here because I spent a lot of time out here let's light it up um, gonna need some uh, some blocks to jump up on so I can place these things well, another one here kind of light this area up And I want two inside. So it actually they should be at at opposite ends. So let's move this from here. And we're gonna have to build up. There's a lamp. Get it lit. So like I say, so these should last for 83 days. That's about eight months. I 
There we go. Finally lit up in here. And I guess the other thing just to show is that all that's left in here now, there's just 175 millibuckets. So, I mean, that's more than, that'll more than half fill another lamp. So I'll probably make up another lamp and, and uh, put it somewhere maybe along the path or out by the animals. Um, but, uh, but having processed all that olive oil, we, it was only enough, it's only enough to fill maybe five lamps and that for 10 months or sorry, eight months. So, um, I'm really want, well, I really need about three times that, you know, to provide me with lighting all over the farm here. You know, I want it along the path, not by the animals and in among the, uh, uh, the uh, berry bushes and stuff like that. So, and I definitely want like, like if I, the next one I do up is going to go over here because I spend a lot of time here by the blast furnace. <laughs> a lot of, whenever I need, need big iron, whenever I need steel, then it's a lot of time spent at the blast furnace. So I definitely want light there. But now I have, if not permanent, at least much longer lasting uh, light in here that uh, I don't have to uh, reset all the time. So I'm going to wait for night uh, to fall just so that you can, we can see what that looks like. See you in a bit. And here we are. It's the dark of night. It's even a new moon. And we've got that nice warm glow out here in the yard. And over here in the barrel barn. Lots of, lots of nice light to work with. And here in house, warm, cozy, well lit. Ah, that's the way it should be. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. And I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye.